1776 was a desperate time for George Washington and the American Revolution. The ragtag Continental Army was encamped along the Pennsylvania shore of the Delaware River, exhausted, demoralized, and uncertain of its future. Washington had to do something, and quickly. His decision was to attack the British. The target was the Hessian-held town of Trenton just across the Delaware River. During the night of December 25th, Washington led his troops across the ice-swollen Delaware, about nine miles north of Trenton. The weather was horrendous and the river treacherous. Raging winds combined with snow, sleet, and rain produced almost impossible conditions. To add to the difficulties, a significant number of Washington's troops forced march through the snow, leaving bloody tracks in the snow behind them. The next morning they attacked to the south, taking the Hessian garrison by surprise and overrunning the town. After fierce fighting and the loss of their commander, the Hessians surrendered. Thus began America's history of Christmas for troops serving our country. The most beloved symbol of the American family Christmas, the decorated Christmas tree, came into its own during the Civil War. Christmas trees had become popular in the decade before the war, and in the early 1860s many families were beginning to decorate them. It was only a matter of time before the Christmas tree made its way into the military camps. Alfred Bellard of the 5th New Jersey remarked about the arrival of the newly popular Christmas icon to his camp on the lower Potomac River. In order to make it look as much like Christmas as possible, a small tree was stuck up in front of our tent, decked off with hard tack and pork, in lieu of cakes, oranges, etc. Christmas carols were sung both at home and in the camps. Can you imagine how homesick the soldiers would become singing these songs? Some of the most popular ones were Silent Night, Away in the Manger, O Come All Ye Faithful, and Deck the Halls. Sometimes Santa Claus worked behind the scenes of wartime savagery to bring a bit of Christmas cheer to those who otherwise had little reason to celebrate. Following General William T. Sherman's capture of Savannah, Georgia, and presentation of it as a Christmas gift to Lincoln in 1864, about 90 Michigan men and their captain in turn gave a token of charity to southern civilians living outside the city. Christmas Day, the soldiers loaded several wagons full of food and other supplies and distributed the items about the ravaged Georgia countryside. 1914. A few days before the first Christmas of that long bloodletting then called the Great War, World War I, hundreds of thousands of cold, trench-bound combatants put aside their arms and in defiance of their orders, tactically agreed to stop the killing in honor of the holiday. That informal truce began with small acts. Here opposing Scottish and German troops would toss newspapers, ration tins, and friendly remarks across the lines. Their ambulance parties, clearing the dead from the barbed wire hell of a no man's land, would stop to share cigarettes and handshakes. Soon it spread so that by Christmas Eve the armies of France, England, and Germany were serenading each other with Christmas carols. In the end, the truce ended with a few stray bullets that escalated into total war and that would fill the air for just shy of four more Christmases to come. The celebration of Christmas changed dramatically with the formation of the United Service Organizations, or the USO, in 1941. The USO is a private, non-profit organization supported by private citizens and corporations. The USO began taking Christmas to American troops wherever they were, across America and in foreign lands, in war and in peace. With the advent of World War II on December 7, 1941, Christmas for American troops was something to mostly be dreamed about. America was preparing for war. The first Bob Hope Christmas USO tour was in 1948 performing for the GIs who participated in the Berlin Airlift. The Bob Hope Christmas USO Tour became a USO tradition. 
and he visited military bases and veterans hospitals every December for the next 34 years. He made his final USO tour in December 1990, bringing Christmas cheer to troops participating in Operation Desert Shield and in Saudi Arabia and the Bahrain. strong, supporting our troops wherever they may be sent across the world. Now Christmas is celebrated by our warriors wherever they are with the support of their families and many community and national organizations, making sure that Christmas reaches even the most remote regions of the world.